What's up guys, it's Mitch here from the DIYrecordingstudio.com and today we're going to be looking at part 3 of the Cappy VP28 mic preamp build. I hope you've enjoyed this video series so far. And if you're new to the channel, please hit like and subscribe down below. And if you've missed those videos, I'll put a link up right here. But that's enough from me, let's get into it. So welcome back to the channel guys. In the last video, we finished the main build for the main circuit board. Um, this video, we're gonna be starting with the sub-assembly for the high pass filters. Some of the sub-assembly parts will be the switches left over from the other bags. And the rest of the components that we're gonna need are in a bag that is titled sub-assembly or sub-HPF. Um, so you'll know which bag we're talking about. And then the first thing you want to attach to the smaller PCB board is the five pin 90 degree header. And what I did was just hold that header in place by using a my alligator clips here. And then I just soldered one of the header leads into the PCB board and then checked its alignment, made sure that it was nice and at a right angle and then soldered the rest of the pins. And then the next thing to solder to this board is the C and K push button switches. Uh, they're pretty easy, basically the same as we did on the main board. I like to hold the switches in place with some tape if possible, and then turn the board over, solder one of the legs, check its orientation, and then solder the rest of the legs. And then once you've soldered all the legs on the first switch, it's really just rinse and repeat for the second one. You just need to tape it down again and flip the board over and then solder those legs as well. And the main thing to keep in mind is that these legs are really close together on this board and you might want to just make sure you're careful with the amount of solder you add and make sure you solder them nice and quick so you don't melt the switches themselves. And then next up, we have to stuff the board with the capacitors. These film capacitors, um, you'll need to check the bill of materials to figure out where their placement goes. On the bill of materials, you'll see a um, corresponding place on the board with the value that's written on the capacitors. And if you have trouble seeing those values on those capacitors themselves, it's always good to have a magnifying glass just to double check them um, if you want to do that. I highly recommend it because sometimes it'd be hard to check the values, but double check them before you put them in the board. Uh, common sense says that it'll go in order of size, but some of these capacitors, it's a bit hard to see by size which one's which. So double check those values and make sure you put them in the right place. And then once you've got them all in the right place, you can go ahead and solder all of those legs. And what I generally do is solder the ones I can get to first, especially on these smaller boards. And then sometimes I'll snip some of the legs and then solder the rest. And once that's done, you should have a fine looking high pass filter board. And then next up, we have to install the keystone brackets and the hardware. Um, these brackets will help mount this high pass filter board to the main board. And Jeff Steiger recommends that this should only be done finger tight at the moment. And it will require two of the four to 40 uh, quarter inch Phillips pan head screws going through the keystone brackets and then through the PCB with the number four split lock washers and the number four pattern hex nuts at the rear of the sub high pass filter PCB. And then the last thing to do is to put these push button caps on the switches. Uh, in the instruction manual, it says that these are black. They're actually white in my case. I'm not sure if they've changed recently, but they're white ones for me and these can always be a little bit tricky to push on um, you just don't want to bend any of your components that are on that board while you're pushing them in so just be careful of that and then next off we have to put the standoffs or spaces uh, on the l bracket um, which will be part of the main housing of the 500 series unit and then next up we have to attach the high pass filter sub assembly to the main pcb board you just need to attach the screws to this finger tight once again, or maybe a little bit more snug, but don't over tighten them at this point. And it's recommended obviously that you don't solder this board in with the header yet, just have it sitting in place. It'll be soldered a bit later on. And then you can slide the main PC into that L bracket and then fasten it to the bracket 
with these washers and the screws and make sure that that's nice and tight on the board. And then once that's done, you can tighten the high pass filter brackets as well. And then next, it's time to install the faceplate. Um, you want to check that your alignment with your, all your switches is correct. And then you can put these uh, nuts on. Now in the instructions, it says not to use the Loctite washers. I am reading this now, realizing that I put them on and Jeff Steiger says not to. Um, I would suggest to follow what he says and not use those Loctite washers. I use them and everything's working okay. So hopefully that's not an issue I'm going to have later on. And then next up, all you need to do is solder the high pass filter header legs through the back of the L bracket. And it's not too hard to do. It's a bit tricky but just take your time with it and be careful not to accidentally cross any of those uh, soldering joints. And then next up were these LEDs and these were quite fiddly. You need to bend them at a 45 degree angle so that they will be sitting up a bit off the PCB and then slot in. What I did was roughly measure these out and then um, put them in using a pair of needle nose pliers and I checked the alignment of one of them, the red one here. And then once I saw that that was going to measure up and line up on those tabs, I took that LED out and then measured them against the other LEDs and cut them to the same length. And then once they're all the same length, you can add them to the PCB board. And you just want to make sure that these LEDs before you cut the legs, I should have mentioned that earlier perhaps, that all the LEDs are aligned properly because LEDs are diodes and they have a positive and a negative leg. So make sure you get the orientation correct. And once that's done, you can solder all of those legs to the PCB. It's a little bit fiddly like the high pass filter was, but it's not impossible. Just take your time and make sure you get a nice amount of solder on there and that they've got a nice connection on the PCB board and you'll be all fine. And then we have to install this heat shrink tubing to the header we installed ages ago on the main PCB. And this is to connect uh, the LED signal light. And you wanna make sure that the pins are exposed a small amount at the top there. And then once that's done, it's time to install the green signal LED light. Make sure that you get the orientation of this correct. Once again, with all LEDs, it's important to make sure you do that correctly. And I measured this up and then bent the legs as required to line up inside that heat shrink tubing. And then once that's done, you can solder the LED legs to the header inside that tubing there. And then all your LED lights should line up nicely. And then once that's done, we just need to attach the potentiometer knobs and they're quite easy. It's best just to line up the potentiometers at 12 o'clock with a pair of pliers and then put the knobs onto the shafts and then tighten them at the corresponding position at 12 o'clock so that you know you've got them facing the right way and they'll line up with all these stepped uh, potentiometer positions. And then you just need to put these little stickers on each of the potentiometer knobs and obviously the little one goes on the little knob and the big one goes on the big one, it's pretty easy. And then once that's done, that's basically the build finished for the main PCB board. Uh, there is the op amps that need to go in those two remaining slots that you can see on the PCB there. They can be quite tricky. So what I'm gonna do is a separate build video for each of those op amps because they need some special attention and care when building and there's some tricks and tips you might wanna know before building those. So I'll do them in the next video. So that's it for the Cappy VP28 mic preamp build. I hope you've enjoyed this build series. It was a lot of fun to make and I look forward to doing a whole heap of shootouts. Now that I've got a few different mic preamps to choose from, I'm looking forward to doing some experimentation with the different sounds and different options for mic sources that I can use these different preamps for. And if you've got any ideas for any types of shootouts that you might like to see, hit me up in the comment section down below. As always, don't forget to hit like and subscribe. I'm Mitch from the DIYRecordingStudio.com and I'll catch you soon.